There's one thing I do love about this landscape when I come out here, and the thing that always surprises me is just how unbelievably quiet it is. There's no cars, there's no people, there's no trees, there's no animals, there's nothing. The only sound you hear sometimes is the sound of a of a black crow flying overhead because there's a number of black crows out here. You can literally hear like the, the feathers in their wings when they're flapping and they're uh, pushing down against the air. And you can hear it with such extraordinary uh, clarity that it's, it's, almost, it's almost unnerving. But uh, I find it beautiful. There's a sense of calm and peace out here that is, that is hard to replicate elsewhere. So yeah, I am, uh, I'm glad I hiked up here. Um, <laughs> I took a little bit of a risk. I, I saw this from way down on the road, down that way. It's this really surreal landscape up here. Just wonderful, with this, especially with this large boulder here and this very sharp angular cut on the side of it here with these sharp angles and lines around the outside of it. And this interesting other little shape that's kind of jutting out from the, the back right of it. Then of course you have the ebb and the flow of the ground underneath it. And if in a nice empty space over to the right, that gives some breathing room and allows the eye to kind of wander back up in, into there to see what else is here. Because there are plenty of other uh, exciting things to see up here too. There's some hoodoos here. There's a little one right here, just a tiny one. But there's a couple of other ones uh, over that way too. And this landscape is just so surreal and just otherworldly, absolutely beautiful. So we're getting towards golden hour right now and it's only 4.30 in the afternoon, which is amazing. I love this because then I don't have to stay up until 9.30, 10 o'clock after being up at four in the morning, you know? I mean, this is, man, these winter hours are so much nicer. You can actually like uh, get some decent sleep and go to bed at a uh, respectable hours with hours like these because the sun is going to be completely gone and, and it's going to be dark by six. But anyway, what I'm standing here for is, I mean, as you can see, I have my uh, camera set up over here, shooting with uh, the new, that's, that's the, uh, the R5, of course, and I'm also using the, the new Canon 15 to 35 F4. There's just been this pervasive cloud cover just all day, which has actually been kind of nice, you know, kind of nice diffuser uh, above everything, nice soft diffuse light. But right now I'd rather not have it because those dark clouds up there are blocking the sun 
And according to Wendy, I checked the mobile app, the clouds appear to be heading in this direction. Uh, they're also heading west. And it's clear, mostly clear back here behind me. So my hope here is that with a little more wind, perhaps, uh, a little more speed, perhaps these clouds will uh, roll out from under the sun and the sun will give a nice uh, like rim light on the side of the, um, of the headland up here. And some of these uh, boulders that are down here in the valley below. I'm hoping, I don't know, I'm, I'm worried though that the sun may be setting at the same speed that the clouds are moving and they're just gonna go down together and we're just gonna end up with flat gray light. But if the clouds could just hurry up a little bit, we might, we might get some light up there on that ridge. So uh, let me show you actually what I have going on in the back of the camera over here. So this is, um, this is my composition here. And this is what we're currently looking at. And as you can see, it looks a little bright, but I am bracketing, actually, I just turned it off. So that's a plus two, and that's just a regular exposure. And then that's underexposed by two stops. So I think two is actually more helpful for uh, blending in HDR at this point, because a single exposure out of this camera just has so much latitude by itself that plus one, minus one, uh, exposures, additional exposures don't really add all that much. They don't really help the HDR all that much. So I'm intentionally going over and under by two stops here uh, to really pull out some detail. But the thing is, is that I do really like um, like these bright uh, pastel style of like desert images. And I like pushing the exposure a little bit. And I'm okay with blowing out the sky uh, because then it starts to lose some, uh, some of its presence and it doesn't look quite as earthly, <laughs> if that makes sense. It gives it almost like an ethereal kind of quality, like it just looks a little more mysterious, I think, and not quite as like a golden hour Midwest photo with like you know, cobalt blues and, and bright orange and and reds. And I know some people love that and I enjoy that as well. But for me and my photography, I, for some reason, I, I enjoy like desaturating the image, pushing that exposure and getting that pastel look. So we're kind of sort of getting some, some light up here. I don't know if you can see any difference now, but it is looking a little bit different. We're starting to get a little bit of definition in the, uh, in the headland up there. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, I'll take what I can get at this point. The clouds are still moving. <laughs> this might happen.
I think like a lot of people, I have a, a bucket list, so to speak, <laughs> a checklist, a bunch of pins and Google Maps, a bunch of places that I would love to photograph someday. And I think what happens sometimes, and this is what I did last time, I ended up almost racing from one location to the next. And it's not, you know, I had a few good photos from it, but I felt like I took a lot of just photos that just really didn't do a whole lot for me, that I just wasn't that excited about. So what I decided to do on this trip was to focus all of my time and attention on one place. Just do nothing but explore this and be in it and experience it and pay attention to what's happening with the light and the weather and how the environment and the landscape changes during the day. Instead of spending so much of my time behind the wheel of a car looking at a landscape out the window, kind of bring it down a notch and spend some extended time, some extended quality time, <laughs> as they would say, in one place. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And this is a great example of what keeps bringing me back to this location, what I love so much about this area in Southern Utah is this soft undulating uh, landscape and this floor that's underneath everything. It looks like, uh, like waves or like sand dunes. And then of course you have these wonderful uh, copper boulders that are just perched right in here like someone just dropped it right down from above. This, this one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because it's all sloping downhill. And if I were to shoot from down here, the camera would be kind of like this, looking upwards, not a particularly nice angle. And there's no way I can shoot from a, with a telephoto back that way. So I think I'm gonna have to get up with the drone a little bit, even though I would must, much prefer to shoot with the um, high megapixel uh, mirrorless camera that I have. Would much rather do that than the drone, but a drone will do in situations like these, but I'm still gonna try shoot it anyway with the old uh, camera and tripod approach. down this way, back down into the valley again, and out to the road where I'm parked, because it is cold, and I'm hungry, and I need some coffee, and I've and, uh, been up here for like, God, like four, five hours now? I mean, it's been, it's been a while, and uh, I definitely need to take a break for a bit, because blue hour, golden hour, and all that is only about, um, it's only about four hours away, so I need to recharge and get ready and come back and hope, hope for some good light this evening. Hey, listen, I just wanna say thank you for your uh, time and attention and for hanging out with me and for supporting my channel and for um, making it all the way to the end of this video. You should be congratulated for, uh, for sticking with it. I really do appreciate it. Look at these mounds around me. My God, these things are so cool. I just. Man, I just can't get enough of it. And I think, um, you know, I think my decision to, you know, kind of focus all of my, I'm looking how to get down here, by the way. Um, that doesn't look so good. That doesn't look promising. Um, you know, I, I think I'm feeling some validation for my earlier decision to, um, to stick with one place, squeeze it for all it's worth and to get as much out of it as I possibly can instead of rushing around like I normally do. I'm gonna try descending this hill here. Fortunately, it's not a hill that I have any interest in photographing, so I don't mind putting some footprints in it. That'll be okay. Um, anyway, 
As I was saying, uh, thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time.